हाँ मेरा नाम जेरी है योर वैल्यूज विल बी चैलेंज स्टार्ट विद द थिंग्स यू नो वेल एंड बिल्ड आउटवर्ड फ्रॉम देम योर ओनली एट द बॉटम ऑफ द रन अंटिल दे हायर द नेक्स्ट पर्सन योर वैल्यू इज मोर देन जस्ट योर सेल्स फिगर्स गेट टू नो व्हाट some people might call the smaller people in your environment i love cultures in general and i love um, indian culture in particular build on the skills you have the knowledge the insights mm-hmm. and then put put more into that frame i don't know what's happened but your lectures have gotten a lot better lately <laughs> oh i thought that was the close <laughs> Hi everyone welcome to the episode 17 of inspirational interviews my today's guest is dr zairi zimmerman dr zairi is a retired professor of physiology from indiana university in us he is also a veteran toastmaster he has been my mentor for few years and he is also a hobbyist beekeeper zairi has a special indian connection but that i'm not going to reveal watch this episode to find that out if you like this video please click on the like button comment share and subscribe to my channel so over to the interview Good morning afternoon evening people joining or rather watching this video from across the world I am so excited and delighted to have someone whom I have been associated since I joined the Pioneer Club in Toastmasters and who has been a true mentor guide and a real help for me uh, Dr Jerry Chimerman Welcome Jerry to my show Greetings Hanatosh glad to be here Thank you so Thank much you. so This is a 17th episode of this series and I have had a lot lot of learning fun and lot of learning opportunities and I'm looking forward to you. I'll give a quick uh, overview of the format so this is more like a question answer session. I'll be asking a few questions uh, hopefully not too tough <laughs> and uh, and you'll you'll give your answers and then once we record this we'll compile it in a video and put it on youtube and other channels so are you game for it i'm pretty sure oh i'm game for it all right so if this if this is you're asking for my permission yes you have my permission <laughs> thank you so much okay uh, so let me start uh, by asking you about your life journey i know a bit about you you've been a professor you've been a toastmaster but Can you give a summary of your life events? Where did Cherry started, and what all things Cherry have done over the years? Whoa! Well, how much time do you have? Uh, two, two, three minutes. <laughs> okay, no, go ahead. Okay, I I grew up for the most part here in Indianapolis, Indiana. It's where my family moved when I was about. Five years old. My father was a grade school principal. My mother, eventually a grade school teacher. But if I, if, when I tell people where I grew up, I almost always say that I grew up on a small farm in southeastern Indiana. And I, I from what I gather, it would be from. what i know of indian culture it would be somewhat like saying i grew up in the village and it was uh, it was really a very important formative time of my life my father's brother walter owned the family farm he was a bachelor until I was about 6 and then he married but they never had any children. So I went there, I spent all my summers uh, any time through the school year there was a week long vacation I at school from school I would spend most of my time there. Uh, I really valued that 
experience and most of all, I, I valued his mentorship of me. I, I would not be the same person I am today. I'm confident were it not for my experience with him. Right. I graduated from high school here. I went to college in Ohio. I had a couple of more mentors as college professors. I went to graduate school at Ohio State. I then came back to Indianapolis by a twist of fortune. I got my postdoctoral and then eventually worked at the medical school and finally for the last several years of my career at the University of Indianapolis in physiology, human biology, physiology. How's that? Amazing. Thank you. So now let's talk about your voluntary services. I know you have been a member of Toastmasters. You also have a, a thing for beekeeping and a lot of love for animals. So do you want to talk about that? Yes, uh, I'd be glad to. Uh, my, just yesterday, in fact, I was asked to tell someone how I got started in Toastmasters. So while I was a junior faculty member at the medical school, there was a demonstration Toastmasters meeting. I must say, I just went out of curiosity. I joined because it looked like it was going to be fun. But after about six weeks, I realized it was more than that because coming out of a lecture one day, one of my more senior colleagues said, Jerry, I don't know what's happened, but your lectures have gotten a lot better lately. <laughs> and, you know, that really made me start taking Toastmasters a lot more seriously. I stay because it's still fun. I stay because of the marvelous people I meet. I stay for the constant uh, intellectual stimulation and and i could go on yes i participate a lot in uh, beekeeping activities i've been a beekeeper uh, for about 20 years when my children were younger i volunteered a lot uh, being a softball coach for several years i at one time was a member of what here in the United States is an organization called the League of Women Voters. It's, a, it's an organization that's been around for many years. It played an instrumental part in helping uh, women gain the right to vote here in the United States. And then by the time I came along, it's mostly a voter education organization. Um, I think I was the first or second person, male, man, in Indiana to join. Wow. And I became quite involved in that for quite a few years. Withdrew only because at some point I it was necessar necessary for me to become a single parent. Uh, volunteering and getting involved in various activities is, I guess, one of my strengths, but it's also a weakness. A lot with church activities as well, not so much recently, but in the past. Mm -hmm. Again, you, you don't want me to keep talking too much, I'm sure. No, that's fine. I, I love hearing from you and I've learned so much from you over the years. I still remember the time that uh, while I was there in Indiana and I was preparing for my speech contest and every time I reach out to you, you had some really, really valuable suggestions. I had. And I've learned so much from you. Thank you so much. You're you're welcome. Well, and that it's, that was a payback in a way. Not that I felt about it that way, but about my third year in Toastmasters, I was in the international speech contest, and I was fortunate to go all the way to the finals of our district and came in second. But it was uh, the mentoring of two or three persons who made it possible for me to get that far. True, true. I appreciate I, I, your efforts and I have fun seeing people like yourself succeed and, and move on and do other do great things. Thank you. I wish you I I hope that you didn't see it as a satire that people like you. <laughs> I'm just having fun. Okay, uh, and I I totally agree that mentoring is a very crucial part whether it's a professional life, whether it's a 
organization like toastmaster or be in our personal life i think that plays a huge role in our development in our growth mm-hmm. okay so let me uh, get to little bit more serious part of it where i ask people so my philosophy is that lot of people t- talk about success or rather boast about their successes but in this interview i ask people about their one or two failures that they had in life and what were their learnings mm. i know you must be having finding it hard but if you have please share with us oh boy there there have been more than one as i'm sure of most people i suppose the the one that comes first to mind is um uh, when my when my children were my oldest was about 13 and my youngest was 3 uh, i became a single parent um and i became a single parent because my marriage broke down and as i look back on that i don't know i guess that's a failure it would be a failure i think any time a relationship breaks down it led though to a success and that i raised i think well, i know uh, four very, very remarkable uh, children i think they probably the youngest is now 38 and the oldest is 48 so i believe they sort of bracket right in about where you are you're probably closer to the youngest one yeah true <laughs> and um uh, so that i've had some financial issues that have come up and that was uh largely due to just poor practices on my part i hope it i learn from that mm-hmm. I, i don't know um and i guess in a way i don't count this i don't count any of them as true failures as i look back mm-hmm. but also my first position professionally was at the iu school of medicine as i mentioned earlier and that's that's a position where you're expected to go on and de- develop a research program and so forth then you if all goes well you receive what is called tenure and the an assurance that you will continue in your position i love the teaching and i think i'm very good at it but i was not very good at the research part of it Mm-hmm. or the management aspect of it and i suppose that's a failure and if there's a lesson i learned there it was it, i try to find work for positions where your weaknesses are not so crucial work for positions where you can emphasize your strengths right i used to tell students that when I'd have a student coming in and they were trying to study for a big exam or maybe a professional exam like the graduate record exam or the medical school aptitude test and they would be trying to tackle the things which they just did not understand and my position was always work from your strengths start mm-hmm. with the things you know well and build outward from them Uh, those are the areas in which you will most efficiently develop new schools and skills and develop new knowledge and i've largely found that to be the case for myself mm-hmm. start from things you know start from strengths and then build outward right. such that um, you can build on what you know build on the skills you have the knowledge the insights mm-hmm. and then put put more into that frame. So sure. that I think I think this is very profound. I I love the fact that you said any any failures is not a true failure because it's, it's all a journey. We are learning, we are it improving. It feels like it at the time. It, yeah, it does it, feel devastating, yeah. It it take it can sometimes take 2 or 3 years before mm. 
so one gets past that sense of gut-wrenching failure staying with it yeah keep going thank you so much that was really really uh, profound and really, really interesting so next i want to ask you about the elephant over the world <laughs> if i say now <laughs> it's not in the room so over the world the covid 19 corona so how has corona impacted your life and uh, what are the things that you're doing now well in many ways it hasn't affected me that much of course in other ways it's had a big impact let's start with the biggest impacts and that is i am a very social person i like to get out and be around people and do right. things right. that's one of the things that i enjoy about toastmasters is that i participate at any one time i'm participating in at least three clubs sometimes mm-hmm. as many as five and i enjoy the people i encounter in each one and there's something that just cannot be replaced by zoom right or online and i and along with that obviously family and children that has been difficult but i've learned new skills just before i contacted you i completed a family reunion here online mm-hmm. there were people from all over the midwest here in the united states and i think at the at the end we agree that in many ways it was better than when we met in person that we still want to meet in person right but there were people in attendance particularly some second and third generation younger people that just would not come drop mm-hmm. make the drive to a physical location we had more time to talk and chat uh the table around which we were sitting metaphorically mm-hmm. at 16 chairs wow. and we all well, by that i mean there were 16 of us Five present yeah. and as we chatted everyone was involved whereas in a physical presence you you're usually around a table of 4 6 8 individuals and what's going on at that other table <laughs> you don't know you don't know yeah so uh, that has been probably the biggest impact now in other ways uh, there's not been as much of an impact and that is back to my beekeeping i very much enjoy mentoring new beekeepers and the nice thing about mentoring beekeepers is i can still go out and do that i'm retired I can fit my schedule to meet theirs which I always did. But when we get together it's always outdoors. Mm-hmm. No problem there. At the most there will be two people present beyond myself so three Jeez. usually only one other person. And so to a great extent it's that hasn't changed much. Mm. Um, I could go through other things that have changed but for me personally and i think my the nature of my interests and the fact that i'm retired I, I, it has not affected me nearly as much as it has some of my uh, other friends and some of my younger friends and, and certainly my children uh, i really worry about them i worry about the long term implications on their lives and i i worry about the long term implications on my country united states as i as i do for how things will evolve in other nations around the world it, it's going to be different it's going to be totally it's going to be different and probably there's going to be a new normal there would be some positives coming out of it and of course mm-hmm. we all know about the other things so thank you so much cherry i know you do have an indian connection uh, i remember the first time when we met in Pioneer Club and you say Namaste. I I was actually taken aback. Namaste. Okay. <laughs> so yes, you want Namaste. to you want to talk about your Indian connection? Uh, a lot of our audience is going to be from India, so I think they'll appreciate that. 
जी हाँ मेरा नाम जेरी है आई आई ऑलवेज हैव अ फैसिनेशन विथ साउथ ईस्ट एशियन कल्चर बट व्हेन माय सेकंड डॉटर वेंट टू कॉलेज आई हैड बीन डिवोर्स्ड फॉर ओवर टेन इयर्स एंड she met a young lady on her floor at the dorm in at Vanderbilt whose mother uh, was widowed had been widowed for about as long as i was divorced and she was indian from punjab mm-hmm. and the classical story the girls set us up you know my daughter and sujata decided that the two of us needed to get together and uh we hit it off very quickly uh uh we very close i i'm still close friends uh, i'm still friends with uh, santosh and i'm still close friends with her three brothers and her sister um all three well, two of the brothers came to the united states while we were together unfortunately it didn't work out in the long run we were together for more than 10 years um i taught the brothers and their wives how to drive i taught their daughters how to drive i'll be going to an engagement ceremony for one of the daughters uh, later this summer i was fortunate to be able to travel to um Chandigar uh, Panchkala uh, with uh, Santosh on one occasion I guess my interest in Indian culture uh, somehow when we at the university had students from India mm-hmm. uh, they somehow were attracted to me maybe it was the Indian flag I had on my door I don't know <laughs> but um I was fortunate enough to be able to go to Pune Uh, one year and uh, be a participant in two different weddings um, i i just i love cultures in general and i love um, indian culture in particular and and in so saying i realize that you can't just say indian culture it's like america it's different in every part and probably even more so in India than it is here in the United States. That's that's a okay. wonderful country strengths and challenges but um, yes I very pleased that's part of my life. Yeah. That that's so true there there is there are a lot of mini Indias inside India and every state even every district has their own culture their own uniqueness you can't say something positive or negative but yeah it's it's a great place and uh, and we would love to have you at our place which is near varanasi a place called jonpur so whenever you are visiting india do let oh, me i i will certainly i have every intention of being able to return at least once uh, at some point in the future so yes i may take you up on that awesome thank you so much for that so now we are coming towards the last question and that's i think is one of the very important question that i ask my all my guests is what are two or three tips or any anything that you want to tell to all young professional who are studying or who are about to start their career journey what would be your uh, tips for them uh, that they can actually apply and, and get more success to to say wow uh Yeah and and people who are watching this I, I wish I wish that, that we did I'm not set up the question <laughs> where to, how to limit myself here I'm going to start with some simple things Sure yeah something I've told my students is wherever you work be sure you get to know the we used to call them secretaries the clerical staff Uh, get to know the custodians uh, get to know what 
some people might call the smaller people in your environment mm -hmm. because they are the people that really make things run. When I was a graduate student, I wasn't faculty or anything because I, because I was friends. You can't just know them. You have to be friends. Mm. I could get into places in the building where I worked where some of the department chairman could not go because I knew who had the keys and they trusted me. And if I needed something, I could get it. So get to know not just the important people, mm -hmm. but get to know the people that really count, some people that make things happen on a day-to-day -day basis. The next thing I would say is, in a very similar manner, get to know your colleagues, be a part of what's going on, be, be true to yourself. Um, I've had mentors and experienced people tell me that this, and I've learned it to be true, integrity is extremely important. And that's not, I mean, it's easy to say, yes, um, I have values and I will do them, but your values will be challenged. Right. And there will be times when it will be very difficult, if not impossible, for you to be true to your personal values. Um, consider those times very carefully. Um, if you decide to stick with your values, realize that there may be a consequence. Keep in mind that as life moves on, you will have options, you've learned. If you decide to compromise your values, which as I said, sometimes, I don't like saying it, but sometimes we just you have, have to, to yeah. to some extent, be very much aware of how that is affecting you personally. Mm -hmm. um, so that is true. Be a mentor. Right. Be helpful to everyone around you. Uh, even if you are an entry level person, you're only at the bottom of the rung until they hire the next person. And to the extent that you can start to help them, Mm -hmm. do it and as you move up in your position continue to mentor and help your value to your institution your in my case university or your corporation is more than the classes you teach or your sales figures or whatever right. your value and it will be recognized is how you help develop the others on your team. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a, a good, successful corporation, they will see that. They will see that your value is more than just your sales figures or your output in a particular. It's how are you expanding that? How are you multiplying that value mm -hmm. by being a mentor to others. Um, I could go on, but those are things that, yep. those are the things that strike me. Be friends with, get to know, value the people in the group that are not normally recognized. Mm -hmm. uh, be very aware of your own personal values and think carefully about them as you move along. Right. Be a mentor and help others because that's your true value to the corporation or the institution to which you belong. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, these are really uh, interesting and insightful ideas for any I mean, We all know that 
be a mentee reach out to people but i rarely heard people that like, you need to be yeah. a mentor when even when you start so thank you so much for that thank you you work you work so this actually leads us towards the closure of the episode and uh, oh i thought that was the closure <laughs> yeah this is closer i this is my closing remarks <laughs> that's part of my that's part of my nature i like to i know that's fine get i love it, it. <laughs> So I was just get, gonna give my closing remark. Probably this part might be edited in video. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I would like to end the episode by saying let's all help each other. And when I say help, it's not always about money. It's also about talking to someone for a few minutes. It's also about feeding a pet sometimes. Let's help each other, and we'll be out of this situation. pretty soon so thank you so much for watching this for having cherry in this show i love every bit of it so until next time let's all keep learning keep growing and keep going out of our comfort zone this is haritosh and this was episode 17 with dr jerry jimmerman thank you so much jerry